Well, thanks everybody for, for joining. Tom, thanks for joining. Hey. I don't say thank Happy you enough for you joining. Hey. So. Wow, somebody is really trying to suck up early here. <laughs> uh, and hopefully you can see my screen still. I can. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks everybody for joining. This is another Office 365 Productivity Tips. Although, I know, Tom, I saw your other message, you're referring to it. I will rebrand it going forward. It'll be the Microsoft 365 Productivity Tips. As I was putting things together yesterday for my slide deck, I thought... <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen that whole thing that they're rebranding officially as of like, what, today, tomorrow, yesterday, yeah. something like that. Yeah, it's all official. And so yeah. what does that mean for most people? Is Absolutely it? nothing. Yeah. <laughs> no change. Although, although so they, they announced this uh, a few days ago, I think end of last week, or maybe it was this week, I don't know, time is a blur, uh, <laughs> that there's the new Microsoft 365 consumer offering. I think it was Monday. Yes. And, and people are saying, well, it really is just a rebranding of the name, but there are some new capabilities that come yeah. out with that. Honestly, it's just new stuff that would have come out even without the rebranding and would have been roll, rolled in. But uh, yeah, there are some new things. So uh, go, go check on, do a search on uh, new Microsoft 365 consumer offering and check that out. Yeah, I mean, it's a great deal. Like I'm on the family plan, have been for, for years, and it's fantastic. Yeah, I was with the family plan too. And then when all the news started coming out about, okay, here are the new like home and family or whatever the, the differentiation was this time, I actually backed off one level uh, because I really don't have that family scenario anymore where there's multiple people in my household that might need it. Yeah. Um, so I just went to a single one, which goes from like $99 a year down to $69 a year. So it's right. not that yeah. big of a deal, but it's like, yeah, I really don't need those five different licenses anymore. So exactly. I just went ahead and dropped it. Exactly. Well, let's uh, jump in. Uh, for those that are new, welcome. For those that are returning and that are here every month. <laughs> welcome uh, again. Welcome again, yes. <laughs> I guess same welcome. It's a slightly different welcome. I don't know. <laughs> there you uh, go. My name is Christian Buckley. Uh, I have a company called Collab Talk, and I do uh, technical marketing primarily within the uh, Microsoft ISV space. Those are all my uh, you know, the software companies that you know from the SharePoint and Office 365 world. I've worked with many, many of those those companies, and I blog out in BuckleyPlanet.com, and you can find us on YouTube. In fact, all of the slides and the recording, uh, everything will be on my blog this evening and up on YouTube where you can go and watch this, share it with your friends and family members. Yes. So good <laughs> stuff. Tomas. And that's, that's me. That is you. <laughs> that's me. I work for Cambia Health Solutions, which is an insurance umbrella firm that encompasses a lot of different firms underneath it. Um, in the Pacific Northwest. I don't actually live in the Pacific Northwest anymore. I'm now out in Minneapolis. So <clears throat> I get snow for a lot longer than I used to every year. Yeah, slightly longer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like November to July. <laughs> and you get those um, mosquitoes the size of small birds during the summer. Is, so that's This great. is true. Yeah, we can sit out and throw bread to them and feed them. <laughs> Works out really well. I like it. Uh, I go ahead and blog office productivity tips at my site called oneminuteofficemagic.com. And that's where you'll find a lot of these tips, plus tips I've done in the past, plus tips that Christian beat me to that I couldn't use in this particular format, things like that. So feel yeah. free to go out and visit my, uh, visit my site. Yeah, I was going to say that, so Tom has for years has been, so just about everything he presents you, you is like is already up on the blog or will be shortly. I've been trying to improve on that and I'm now uh, every, so all the tips I share over the next uh, week or two, I'll be blogging those as, as well. And I kind of, I, I think Tom, you do the same thing, expand on the topics a bit, provide yeah. other helpful links and sometimes more images and uh, so to kind of walk you through each of the different tips, but yeah, just definitely go ch check out both of those things. And if you're new to this, here's, we do, uh, we have little short polls in between. We do keep a count here. The current leaderboard, as you can see, we had that tie on one <laughs> round. So that kind of threw things off. Otherwise we'd There's be no tied ties in baseball. <laughs> 
But uh, Tom's in the lead with events one, and uh, and yet you can see how back and forth this is. I've got the most overall votes right now, so I I'm back on the board with a leader board item. I'm, so I'm I'm guessing with the number of attendees we have today, you're probably going to keep that particular <laughs> lead. Yeah. It's a bit <clears throat> It's a little bit smaller today, but here's how we run these things. So each of us are going to take turns. Uh, so we, we don't duplicate, duplicate content. We've each, uh, we've done this before where I think each of us have shared something that the other person was you know, co going to present. So what we have to mix it up. I've, I have two backups today because I'm nervous about a couple of my items. I'm excited it's, to share. It's interesting because I was a little nervous about mine too. I think that there's going to be, depending on who placed what where, we may have issues. Agreed. So I've got backups. I have to say that my backups, I didn't go build them out. It's like an image with a little bit of text and like a link. And <laughs> I'll have to talk to them, but hopefully that doesn't happen. But then uh, we have everybody vote. And as we always say, no hitting under the below, no hitting below the belt, but as I'm said, sure that's all I can reach. <laughs> And then we pick a winner and we, we do a little virtual crown at the end and uh, we go from there. So with Christian, that. Christian, just in case yeah. you didn't see the chat, Sandra Mahan made a very, very astute observation with those stats. Those stats are like the difference between the electoral college and the popular vote. Yes, that's right. I'm winning, so, the, elect I'm winning, wow, winning the college. You're winning the popular vote. Yeah, so... What, who who's the, the the true grand poobah of productivity? Me. Me. Yeah. It's yeah. Anyway, yeah. So <laughs> let's it, do it. It changes. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's jump into this with round one. I'll kick things off. Did you cover this one, Tom? No, I did not. Because okay. We don't use Yammer in our Yammer in our area, but I'm really glad to see you let off with this because it means my top number one is okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll yeah, we'll see. But uh, the. Uh, and this is actually, I, I think that you know, a lot of organizations that have struggled, like why do we need to use Yammer? A couple things that helped with Yammer, uh, rebranding Yammer groups to communities, I think is what made sense. Uh, it, it helped better, I think, explain the difference between that, uh, you know, it, it, the which tool to use when discussion between Yammer and Teams. Uh, but having this integration, I think, will help even more for organizations to understand, okay, here, the, 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 these are the different use cases. Here's how they work together. One of the, and I'll, I'll come back, I'll have kind of a theme here on uh, you know, one of the problems with multitasking is uh, you know, dividing your, your time and having to switch back and forth and where's that conversation happening. So by having these these deeper integrations between tools, it means less context uh, switching. Um, but what's great about this is that you have that, that company-wide view into Yammer that you can now insert this in over on the left rail. So you can actually add that Yammer app uh, to that left rail so that as you're working side teams and you don't want to leave teams to go get other stuff done, you can literally just click on that left rail, you'll see here in a minute, and pin that application. So to do that, so you're in your team's environment, in your perspective, your, your view as an individual. Uh, and so from, as an organization, if you're using Yammer, um, you, you, you can have the free version of Yammer that's, that's out there and it will even you recognize it, find that. So if it's not officially supported, if it's somewhere in the organization, you have a profile within it, you can pin that as an application if it has been enabled by your administrator into Teams. And so it's really simple. You just go over and click on the ellipses on the left rail, find the app, search for the communities. You can see there the new communities uh, Yammer app. When you, if you search on communities, you'll find it that way. I think a couple other vendors are now adding communities into the name to make it more visible, findable, because everybody will be searching for that Yammer app. And so once you add that and then you right click on the left rail, once it, you know, Yammer is visible there and you pin it and it will remain then in your left rail. Uh, so this is what it looks like. So you can see the app uh, pinned over on the left rail. 
Uh, and this takes you to kind of your all up Yammer network. So you can see here, um, most of the interaction that I do, in fact, the Yammer networks that I am most active in are not part of my tenant. So my tenant for Collab Talk is a perfect thing to go and demo off of. There's nothing to see there, no proprietary, proprietary information, just enough to show you how the functionality works. But it'll show you all of the communities that you're a member of, the internal as well as the external. And you can see the little globe there in the My Communities. That means that those are external uh, communities that I've created and launched but have people outside of my uh, my do domain outside of my tenant that have access there and then it's really easy there to go in and create new communities and discover new communities but the goal of this is that you can see no matter where you are working if you are moving back and forth between the more focused collaboration and communication of a channel discussion in teams but want to go and review discussions that are happening over on Yammer, um, not having to switch applications, just click on that icon, instantly you see your entire Yammer world. Now, the, as I mentioned earlier, it, it greatly reduces the context switching between applications. However, if you want to align a specific discussion in a Yammer community, uh, with a specific channel, then that is not what the new left rail Yammer app uh, experience does. You still want to add that communities app to a tab within that channel. So by opening up a new tab, and you'll see this experience where you can go in, search on, find the communities, um, uh, you point to the right, um, the right group, uh, or they need to rebrand that Yammer group needs to be rebranded as Yammer community, but to that community and the conversation that's happening there, you can of course all, all also go over into Yammer itself and select the shareable URL for that conversation. Um, and then you add it as a tab. So here, if there is a specific, uh, uh, community activity or even if you have let's say this is a private channel with only Tom and I are in there but I we want to we've got a a private community where maybe there's 10 of us that are talking over within Yammer and I want to link the two of these so that I can easily jump between hey the conversation that Tom and I are having and the relevant conversations over in the this related Yammer community and make it easy to find that and surface that information. So it really is that easy. And of course, the other side of this is uh, you know, you know the, the discovering new groups and, uh, and creating uh, uh, new groups. It's the same experience as in the, the Yammer uh, uh, utility. And this is you know, so essentially within that left rail Yammer communities app, if you click on discover, or click on create a new, it just opens up the Yammer experience to add those. Then of course, you discover new, those new communities that are public and open or request to be invited into the ones that are visible, and then they will then show up within that application. Very nice. And that's it. Yeah. I, we started at our company, started looking at trying to do a proof of concept on Yammer but we were trying to do it at the same time we were doing our migration from SharePoint 2010 to SharePoint Online. It never really got the traction that it needed or the attention that it needed. And then there was a thought that that was going to occur this year, but then COVID. <laughs> so we still haven't gotten to that point, but I like the idea that once again, they're putting more and more focus on being able to use a Microsoft Teams client as the workspace where you're at all day long and you hit your different teams, you hit your different apps. I will even venture to say it's very similar to the concept that Lotus Notes used to use <laughs> where right. you'd have your Lotus Notes client and you had all your little Lotus Notes databases that you used. It's getting to be a very similar type thing. So right. it, agreed. Stuff. Yep. Okay. All right. Over to you. Stop sharing. Um, so what I'm going to lead with today is like the huge Microsoft Teams feature that everybody's been clamoring for, 
and that is being able to do background images in Microsoft Teams meetings. <clears throat> this was one of those things that a lot of people had been asking for it a little bit, but with COVID-19 hitting, everybody going to work remote, Zoom taking off, you know, in popularity beyond, I think, what anybody else figured out. Zoom could do all the background images and people were like, hey, we want to do background images. So for something that I will venture to say was not exactly necessarily a business critical feature, it was like really a feature that Microsoft had to deliver on to try to keep up with the popularity of where Zoom was going. So it's, it's funny what becomes a business priority when everybody's going stir crazy. It really is. That is a very good analogy. I like it. Um, so in this particular case, we do have background images now. So it used to be when you were in a meeting, you would go ahead and click on the ellipsis in the little bar, device bar that you've got there, and it would show you blur background. Well, now that's changed to show background effects. So if you click on the ellipsis, you click on show background effects, what you end up getting is a side panel here that lists the default Microsoft images that they've provided. And there's probably, what, about a dozen or so? Um, I don't think I've lately counted as to what they are. Yeah, but they've got a basic blur one up in the upper right corner. And then they've got various images that they've added. Some of them are empty rooms. Some of them are like looking out the window of a business office. Some of them are medieval villages, really heavy on the space themes because we're all geeks. <laughs> um, so those are all in there. And if you find the one that you like, you basically click on it, wait until it loads, you get the little checkbox in the corner, and then you click on apply. And once you do that, poof, you've now got this custom background, I should say default background, that's different than how messy your office might actually be or things like that. It still blurs what the camera is seeing. So if you're looking at my picture there on the left side of my face, you see some little images. And if I were to move around a lot on camera, sometimes you find that your head might completely disappear because it's trying to keep track of who you are and blur out everything else. So it can put the image on there. But generally speaking, it works really well. Another thing that you have available to you also <clears throat> is that if you want to check out the different images to see what it looks like, you can select an image and do preview. And when you do preview, this shows you what it's going to look like, but it doesn't show it to anybody else who might be on the call. And I find this is kind of important because depending on where your camera is placed and how close you are to the camera, you may have a really nice background. You think it's really great, but then your whole head and body kind of takes up most of the interesting things in the background. Um, so play with that. Once you find out what you like, click apply. It turns on the video and you're set and ready to go. One of the things that was the most commonly asked question once this rolled out to the Teams client was, I want to upload my own videos. Microsoft is actually working on a user interface to allow you to upload your own videos, but it was probably the worst kept secret hack because like the day it came out, people were like, here's where you need to go to upload your own videos. I went ahead and provided the hack in here. So if you're in Windows, you go to C, Users, whatever your username is in your network, App Data Roaming, Microsoft Teams, Background Uploads. And if you put your picture in there, you will actually see your picture show up in your list of options that you can choose from. Now, so Tom, for instance, hey, but do really quick though, but my understanding is so that that uh, uploads folder isn't created until you've actually clicked on and applied one of the out of the box images. You know, that that, that may truly be the case because I know that the day that this finally hit our tenant, I had gone out there and looked for the folder setting before I had tried it. And I didn't see it. It's like, oh, yeah. I must not have it yet. I think it creates it after you use it once with one okay. box. And then it creates that it folder sense. that you can find it. Yeah. Yeah. And I will, I will advise you to make sure. I mean, they recommend that it's like um, nine. Let's see. The resolution should be like 1920 by 1080. So instead of just having a little square, which isn't going to work really well. 
I would advise you if you do have a background to go and perhaps try to make it as, I don't wanna say low res, but don't sit there and go, hey, I've got a high def background in here because it's probably gonna impact network usage. So be careful, like I've gone in and in my trip to Egypt that I took at the end of January, beginning of February, I've got a really nice picture of one of the main pyramids with the Sphinx in front of it that I turned into 72 DPI. And, you know, it's, it's a fairly low res -ish type picture, works really nice. But in terms of looking to see how you center on it, when the camera comes on, you don't know the Sphinx is there because it's behind my back, basically. But you can upload videos there. And I'm going to say probably within the next two to four weeks, you'll probably see a user interface here that allows you to upload videos and gives you all the, the right recommendations of what to do. And there's less chance of you going out here and perhaps inadvertently deleting something or you know, causing this not to work at all in your team's client. So just be careful. I will also put the caveat in there just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> so remember in many cases you are in a business situation. So yeah, it might be really cool to be on the rebel base, you know, and the death star and the whole bit. Keep in mind your company culture. That may be fine. Everybody may think that's cute. In some circumstances, you may want to opt for something a little bit more professional. So just keep that in mind. But this is a really cool feature. I like it. Um, so yeah, give it a try when you get a chance. I'm pretty sure it's the same technology that they use to fake the moon landing too. So just a exactly, <laughs> exactly. Actually, I was on a call with somebody the other day, and the background that they chose to go with was a picture of look like the Apollo astronauts. The one guy sitting in a recliner on the moon with a bottle of beer in his hand. I'm like, I like that one. <laughs> he goes, yeah, but I probably couldn't use it in company meetings. I'm like, yeah, you probably couldn't. You're right. <laughs> and almost, we almost had a first, a first time here where uh, one person, Tom, got all the votes, but somebody had pity and uh, was a Yammer <laughs> fan and one person voted for, for mine. So I'm going to end the vote there. Uh, so 96% of that vote. Ooh. All right, Tom, number okay. two. Okay. I'll go to round two here. Round two. This is something that because I put together these tips for internal distribution in a site we call spark one. Um, I do a lot of images using uh, the image web part on a SharePoint online page. And usually you put the image in there and it just kind of goes <clears throat> to whatever size the image is. And you may think, oh, it's not a big image until you upload it and you realize that it was like high def and was 2450 by something else. And your page is completely blown out of proportion because the page has tried to accommodate the full size of your video. Well, now the image web part makes it easy to resize the video to make something that's a little bit more appropriate for what your page layout is. So in this particular case, I uploaded a video of me and my partner, Tamara. <clears throat> we were in a, um, we we're going to a dance um, costume party at Halloween when it's pirates. And when I put it in there, it looked nice, but it really was a large picture for the page that I wanted to create here. Normally I would probably have to go out and go back into snag it and make it smaller and do whatever I needed to do. But now within the page itself, with the image web part, I can make that change on the fly. So if I click into the picture, you now see this new bar up at the top that has resizing and cropping and you know, how you justify it in the whole bit, which is really nice. When I uh, click the first icon, which is the resizing icon, what it did is it gave me handles on the four corners of the uh, picture that I had. So now I can slide and make the picture smaller, make it larger if I needed to. But once again, I don't have to go outside the application to make that happen. So in this particular case, I grabbed one of the handles, I made it a whole lot smaller based on what the page would need to look like. Uh, I also took a look and said, hmm, yeah, do I need to justify this differently? What I ended up doing was just or was uh, align left 
so it was further over on the page and took up less space from how the whole thing was going to adjust to the size of the picture. And when I saved it, I now had a picture that was appropriate for my page, squared out really nicely. I didn't have to go to any other uh, software piece or delete the picture, try again. Everything was concise within the page itself using the new features in the uh, image web part. So if you're doing a lot of page work and involves images, definitely give that a shot because it's going to give you a lot more control over what you do with the images on your page. And how's the performance of that, Tom? Does it slow down it, pretty well or does it move pretty quick? I This one actually has moved really quick. I'm really impressed with it. So hmm. um, there's not any sort of a, um, what do I want to say, lag time. Basically, you click it, and once it gets the, you know, the handles on there, you can slide it all over the place. And I really didn't see any performance issues at all. Very cool. All right. Stop sharing, and you can go for it now. All right, all right, right. And my round two. See your screen. And so here's another new feature that came out. Um, the was announced just last few days. The Teams and Outlook integrated experience. And so this again comes. I was referring to it earlier of the uh, you know which tool to use when. I, you know, I, I think that people have stopped saying this. I don't know when the last time I heard it, you know, that there's some new application that's come out that's going to be an email killer. <laughs> it's just never, never happened, you know, with any of these applications, the social capabilities. You know, Yammer, back when Microsoft bought them, uh, it, you know, that was, it was going to, you know, it's just going to kill exchange. Didn't happen. Look, there, it, it may greatly reduce um, having teams, same story. It may greatly reduce, especially internal email communications, but email remains a very important uh, communication tool. And again, as, as Tom talked about uh, his last tip, you know, depending on the culture of your organization, email may still be very prominent. So it's a great way to get people uh, to, to kind of seed that conversation to pull emailing people uh, back into the Teams experience or just push the message where you, the people are. Um, so to go in and inside of Teams and you're having a, a thread conversation and you can see that somebody is not in there participating or maybe you just want to have a sidebar outside of the recording that's happening, the threaded discussion in Teams, but you just go over and, uh, and click on the ellipses uh, next to that message, to that discussion, and uh, and so that's that more op the, the more uh, options. And then if you scroll down there, share to Outlook, select that. And what happens, it'll think for a second as it, it goes and it will uh, relies on your uh, exchange online, your Outlook for the web uh, experience. Uh, because Teams is a web-based experience, can you have, you know, if you have exchange on-prem and have a hybrid connector, it'll still work. Um, but it essentially, we'll go and, and plug right into your, your uh, gal, so into your, uh, your profile, and all of your contacts will be pulled into that. And so you can right there, it'll open up Outlook online and uh, allow you to, to create that message. It sends it as an image with a link of that discussion. Um, you can do other things here. You can actually format the body of that message, stylize it. You can add images and attachments and other things. So it's a, it's a nice little tool. That you can pull from local or pull from your online sources, from SharePoint, wherever the, the content is that you want to attach in addition to that, that discussion thread. Now, over in Outlook, once you have that, oh, and it placed it in the way, that was my my build that I I told you I forgot I knew I missed the build there my animation, but uh, you'll have this in the slides as well. What you see on that the back half of that you'll see the Microsoft Teams. You can't mistake it. You just received an email that is being shared from Microsoft Teams. What it's covering in the bottom right corner is the ability to go to Teams. What I've got in bold there in the text. You'll be able to click on that, so you can respond via email as I'm doing here. Um, so yeah, here I, 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 yeah, I, I noted that one just <laughs> now. I'm 
sure you wanted to be aware of that. I like that. It's like, you really shut down Tom's argument, and as he was clearly out of his mind. Oh, nicely played. <laughs> nicely played. It's, hey, I can, I can send these emails to myself. <laughs> it's none of your business, Tom. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it, it's... Um, and so you can, of course, respond, keep it with an email, or as I prefer to do is, uh, you know, I, I use that as just another uh, reminder, hey, this, this conversation I want to participate is going on over in Teams. And so you can, you can use this as, a, as a, a prompting, like, hey, Tom, there's this discussion you probably want to jump in and voice your opinion on that's happening in Teams, and you just need to go down and click on that. So it's a great way to kind of cross-pollinate between email and teams. I like that one. I was unaware that that feature existed and uh, well, it's brand new. Yeah. I may have to promote that one internally in our um, tip site that I do and let people give that a try because I like the idea of being able to send them an email, which they're likely to see and say, Hey, you know, pop on over here if you haven't seen this yet and check it out. So, All right. And we've got one round apiece. I would have voted for you on that one too, my friend. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's jump into round three. So here's one of my favorite, absolute favorite productivity tips. You probably, it's a two-parter. You probably know the first part, but do you know the second part? Uh, using Alt Tab and the Windows key to organize your desktop. And so I've got a bunch of text here, but I'm really just going to talk to it. So the first part of that is, so I have two screens. I've got my primary and a secondary screen. And so my secondary screen, I basically have uh, email and to-do and Spotify that live on that other screen um, pretty much all day, every day. Uh, and then my primary workspace, I might have a dozen different applications open and using alt tab, if you hold down alt and hit tab will help you to toggle between those. So that's that screen that, that, that view down below. You can see, Hey, I've got these different things. I've got my snag editor and the capture tool. And, and of course the things that are open on the other screen, but I can easily jump between those applications as needed. Uh, and, and so that is just a quick way to, uh, and I make some comment about the productivity sapping uh, idea of multitasking, <laughs> which is just, it's just not true. It's not real. You, you multitask, you lose capability. So the, the more streamlined you can make that, and that's why context switching is so hard and it actually kills productivity and why things like the integration with Outlook and with Yammer into Teams so that teams can increasingly become your single workspace, uh, you know, make sense. But obviously it's not gonna be possible with every single tool that's out there. I mean, you can edit Word docs and Excels and PowerPoints <laughs> and OneNotes and all of that right from within Teams, but that's for another day. Um, but so there's the, the alt tab, the first half of that. So hopefully I, we can't do a show of hands if we were in a live session, I would ask uh, how many people are using this and aware of that. It's just fantastic. The, the other thing that you might not be aware of is screen splitting. And so this is where you know, within each of those browsers, and you can actually, if you've got multiple screens, you can do this on each of your screens, um, but it will do one screen at a time. So essentially what this is, like if I'm in editing, in this example, I'm editing an article in my OneNote, and let's say I'm referencing a browser or I'm referencing in this, case I'm a uh, you know, conversation that's happening over in teams. So what I do is I, I click on or I'm in one note is then I uh, click on and hold down the windows key. Uh, and then I hit the right arrow. And what that does when I do that, it'll divide my screen and that screen that I'm working on and it will kind of lock it. It'll frame it in on the right side of the screen because I hit the right arrow. I can, if I want it on the left, I hit the left arrow. And then you'll get that kind of similar to the alt tab experience. You'll get all of the other applications that are open. You select the one that you want to fill the second half of that screen. And there, it'll split the screen. Uh, and so if you want to then say, well, it, I don't need to see that much of Teams. I'm, I'm working over in OneNote. You can actually grab that divider 
and drag it over to the left to give more screen space to OneNote and just so that you can reference that website or in this case, Teams. That is pretty freaking cool. I mean, I've done it before where I've like snapped it to one side or snapped it to the other. Um, but it always usually takes like three or four times to get it. And if you've got your monitor set up to where trying to snap to the right side of your monitor actually just causes it to go off to the other monitor, uh, this is a really nice way to get that exactly set, exactly, you know, even between both sides without you having to go, well, you know, okay, I'll make it smaller here and I'll, yeah, give it enough room, try the other one. Oh, nope, it's overlapping. Now I have to slide that one over. This right. is a really nice way to get that set up really quickly. And right. then you can just proceed to get back to work instead of having to try to figure out you know, how big each screen is to get you some semblance of screen splitting. Like exactly. That. And it's, and, and when used in conjunction with the alt tab, so these are your two primary, especially if you just have a single screen, like if you're traveling and just have a, your laptop and you've got a dozen applications that are open, but you're, pr you're primarily working within two split your screen this way and then use alt tab to go jump and open up the browser as the third right. and back and forth between those three. So it'll retain the shape of the, the, the two, but it's uh, the, the other, I mentioned this in the text there that, that I blew past, but uh, when you think of this as the third tool kind of in this family is the Windows timeline capability. And so your ability to toggle between and then find and pull up those applications historically right. that you were working on days before, uh, it's, it's fantastic. I'm no longer worried, by the way, of, uh, you know, speaking the broader sense of these capabilities of like my system rebooting or, you know, uh, like overnight come back down to the office in the basement and find that my system rebooted, was updated or backed up or whatever and use that timeline feature and then toggle between them and then right, split right. the screen. It's just, it's a great set of features. Nice, I like it. Tom, over to you. Okay, I'm kind of going with a bit of a Teams theme today. <clears throat> and that is, again, with everybody starting to do remote work from home, spending a lot more time in Teams meetings than they probably have ever spent before, um, it's critical that you actually be able to be seen if necessary and or heard and or have network connectivity when it comes to having a Teams call. And it's really good to figure that out before a really critical call that you're supposed to be on. And then everybody has to sit around and wait for you know 15 minutes while you try to do troubleshooting the whole bit. What you can do in Microsoft Teams beforehand to make sure that all your equipment is working correctly is you can use the slash test call feature, which Skype has something very similar to where you can place a test call in Skype and speak for a while and see how it sounds coming back out in the whole bit. This is similar in nature to that, but only obviously focused in Teams. So if you're in your Teams client, if you go up to the um, entry bar at the top of the screen, if you put a slash, it'll give you a list of different commands that you can have, slash commands. One of them that you can see here is test call. So if you go ahead and click on that, what happens <clears throat> is it automatically starts a call with something called Teams Echo, T-E. And it shows you your um, device bar. Tom, you were supposed to say Teams Echo, Echo. Echo, Echo, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> You're right, I really did blow that one. No, that would have been good. You call yourself a theater person, Tom, come on. It's improv, I'm just going to keep going here. Not a problem, yes and, Echo, 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 there we go. <laughs> um, so it brings up your device bar here, and it will show you your video camera, it'll show you your microphone, and obviously the ability to hang up if you need to. But once the call connects, it will basically say, please leave a short message and it's gonna be recorded and played back to you to make sure that one, your mic works, and two, your headphones or whatever device you're using for sound works. So when you get that, comes up, babble away for you know five, six, seven seconds, you stop talking, once it realizes that you haven't said anything for a couple seconds, it goes ahead and stops the recording and then plays it back to you to make sure everything's fine. 
And in a perfect world, which fortunately I had in this case, it comes up and says, hey, your microphone's connected, your speaker's connected, your camera's connected, you're connected to the network. This is great, has everything you need. But if all of, or if any of these came up showing that they were not working properly, that's when you can reach out to your help desk, your team's administrator, whatever, and get that resolved before you get onto a meeting and you find that you don't have the type of connectivity that you have. So this is a really nice feature. It's painless to do, and I really recommend you do it, especially like if you've gotten a new configuration or a new computer or something like that. Again, run this periodically just to make sure everything's running okay. Um, your different meeting mates will appreciate it highly. <laughs> You remember the old days when they, they used the phrase, you know, plug and play with all the different products? <laughs> and plug it, and pray? Yeah, <laughs> I'm right. But I think that's the point. It was, it was never really true. Uh, there was always some, some issues. And I think it's great just from a messaging perspective that they've kind of stopped making that claim and, uh, and made it easier to go and test things. You know, so... Right. All right. So it's uh, 75% uh, to me this time. So thank you, everybody. It's probably well-deserved. Well probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, now we'll nice see if I can get a gentle slam there. <laughs> hey, after what you did on that last email thing, come on. Yeah. Give me a break. <laughs> uh, okay. We'll see if I can get it. Mind, of course would say that, Tom. Come on. Yeah, of course. Of course. We'll see if I can get it tied up here going into the final tip. So here is something called tags that you can use in Microsoft Teams channels, which makes it really nice if you're trying to, especially in a busy channel, focus a small group of people on a particular topic that may just end up whipping by in a very active uh, conversation that people don't see, but you really need them to have attention. So here's how that works now. So if you're the owner of the Microsoft Teams workspace, you basically go in and look at the members of the particular um, team space that you're in, and you'll see this thing for tags. And if you click on the little uh, information circle there, it's basically allowing you to notify a group of people all at once by at mentioning a particular tag. So in this particular case, I'm in a um, Teams workspace that has the SharePoint team plus additional people in it. So there may be things that I do that I really want the SharePoint team to notice, but I'm afraid it's going to like scroll off the screen in 15 minutes if they don't get around to seeing it and they may not scroll back to see it. So in this particular case, I went into the three people who I was interested in here, which is myself and the two co-workers, I clicked on the little tag icon and it lets me type in a tag name. Now, if I already had a tag out there, I could go ahead and apply it to this particular person. But here, what I want to do is type in the tag tech debt. Uh, when we did our migration from SharePoint 2010, it was a nine or a 18 month project that we did in nine months and we accumulated a little bit of technical debt in this. So as we're discussing things that we need to do now to get back to where we should be, I may want to let the SharePoint team know that, Hey, there's something out there that they need to look at. And I'm going to use that tech debt tag. So I went ahead and applied it to myself and Sandra. <clears throat> and now when I'm in a chat, what I can do is do an at mention. So I can do at tech debt and then go ahead and type the rest of my message. And then when I go ahead and submit that, it sends that, um, sends that message out into the chat channel, no particular issue there. But what it also does is basically notify them that, hey, there's something out there that needs their attention because somebody used that at tech debt. A lot of times people use like at general if they want to you know, make sure that people know that, hey, somebody tagged the whole general channel. This is a lot more specific because you can say, yeah, there's something going on in general, but specifically there's something that is tagged with tech debt that I want you to notice. So if you're the owner of a team site and or a team's workspace, and you want to start getting a little bit more focused in some of the notices that get sent out, 
you may want to take a look at this particular feature. That's a really cool feature. Are you able to see like in your profile, the various tags that you're following? I think if you have the ability to go out and check the members and look at the members, you'll see the tags that you're part of. Okay. I, you know, that this is one of those features I completely forgot about. Yeah. It's, it's not one that I'm using a lot yet, but in certain workspaces that I'm part of, this is something that's really critical um, because cool. it does help you stay current with things that are important to you instead of spending all your time scrolling back up to see if you missed anything. Fourth tip here is the immersive reader within Teams. And so this is just kind of a, a simple but really cool thing, uh, whether you have uh, uh, you know, visibility requirements, uh, you know, usability requirements where you need to, to use the reader capability, or if you are, again, multitasking, uh, <laughs> and uh, want to have uh, messages that are, that are longer and have it kind of read back to you while you're semi-paying attention doing something else <laughs> off the side or hands-free. Uh, you know, whatever the reason, uh, it's really simple to go in and do that. So it's just as, as simple as going into the ellipses on that message and from the menu, dropping that down, you can see the immersive reader, just select that. I guess I could have highlighted that box and those animations that I should have done. It'll be <laughs> in the blog post. I'll have the little red box around mm -hmm, it. Sure. But what happens, it'll take that body of that, in this case, this longer uh, discussion, threaded discussion. It'll bring it up into focus, as you can see, so you can, you can tailor that, that look and feel there. And then it'll just start playing it. It'll read through that, highlighting the words in a nice, gentle voice. Of course, there's the ability to go in there, the speed of the voice, change it to, uh, to male or female. <laughs> I love the turtle and squirrel icons. Those are awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and of course, you can also go through and uh, change uh, you know, the text as it, you're following along, so the default experience. Um, highlighting in the parts of the speech, if, you are, uh, if you're using it like in the education sector, and being able to highlight different aspects of the language that's being used. Um, so it's, and then it also has a translation, links to the translation. I've not played with that. Of course, I don't speak any other languages. I can read a little bit of Spanish, um, but uh, enough to know that it's legit Spanish that I'm not able to read. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, it's just a nice little uh, feature, easy to turn on. It's, uh, it's out there. It's global. Everybody has it. So Go check it out. Play with that today. I like that one. Um, <clears throat> I like all the different things too, especially like when it, it's going to highlight adverbs and adjectives and stuff like that. For those who might want to learn a little bit more about English, that's a great way to do so. Yeah, that it is. It, it, I don't even think about that sometimes, but uh, you know, obviously you get the uh, you, you, your strongest learning experiences are when you are immersed within that. And so Correct. if you're, uh, in that work environment and, you know, going through reading a lot of content and have those kinds of tools, it'd be great to uh, have that capability and be able to highlight the language attributes. So, and, Ooh, that was close. I took that one 53%. Ah, so you're going to take this event. We'll what, be tied what, in what events again. There? All right. One last tip. Let's get through this power through seven minutes, six and a half. Okay. Minutes. We'll move forward. Uh, here's one. Don't have Teams. Use the Meet Now in Skype. Did you see all the press around this, Tom? No, I did not. So, um, of course, Microsoft provides a free version of Teams that's out there. So free for, what, six months, and they'll likely extend it if quarantine period extends uh, beyond that. But they went and they, they said, well, yeah, I know that there's, there's a little bit more complexity. Teams is a different use case than some of the other options out there. And Zoom, hey, we're here doing this webinar via Zoom. Zoom is great for some of those capabilities. I get flack from people. I do like the weekly office hours, as you know, Tom. Uh, every Monday, we do it uh, early in the morning and then in the evening for Asia Pacific and with a bunch of MVPs and, and community experts where we answer questions. And we live stream on Facebook and YouTube. And we, we get 
every single week, people giving us grief for like, why aren't my, these Microsoft people doing this on Teams? <laughs> what does that say about Teams? And it said, well, what it says is that Teams doesn't live stream. Not that it's not a great platform. It's an enterprise collaboration platform. And when you want to just do with friends or family members who don't have Teams running, to have them download and install Teams and go in there and add into like all of those steps that are quite required to make that work. And yes, much more robust capability. Sometimes you just want to have a video chat and you don't want them to have to download and install anything. And so Microsoft looked at what was happening with Zoom and said, you know, we've got this solution out there called Skype, the Skype consumer, which is not going away. It's a fantastic tool that's out there and people can go and use the free version of that. And so they've created the meet now capability. So it's as simple as going out to the web, going to the website, the Skype site, um, creating, as you see there, create a free meeting. Don't need to download anything to participate in that. You create it, it thinks about it, creates a link, and there's the link. Don't try the link, I've, that's a fake link. <laughs> um, but from there, you can then go in and share the invite out. So you can copy that, send it via, look, the default is Outlook or Gmail, because Microsoft recognizes that those are the top two. And so they provide that method. So you can have that default experience. And right there from the interface, again, I've not downloaded anything else. Just push out that email, send it to your friends, uh, and uh, or copy the link, paste it in, share it out with the world, whatever you want to do for that meet now. And then for you as the host of that, it will use, it'll open up inside of your Skype consumer experience. And you can see that meet, that meet now. And there it is. And there again is the fake URL. Um, and you can, once you're inside, you can add additional people, continue pushing that out there. You can use video um, or, or just have that, that audio call, but it's free. It's easy. There's no download and there's no need to go and, and, uh, you know, use some of these other, if you are a Microsoft shop and must use all things Microsoft, there's an option that, uh, it, it doesn't have the 40 minute uh, meeting limit that the free Zoom has, which is uh, is my in-laws up there using the free version of it. And I've said, like, like, use my instance. You record it, do everything, but but no, they're just continuing to do that. And it kills the meeting after 40 minutes. Uh, or use this free version of, of Skype and do the exact same thing. Well, that's pretty cool. I like this one. I was unaware that this right. existed. So this is something that I've shared before in Word being able to make pretty links. Um, but this kind of cropped up. I saw it passing by, I think, in a tweet or something, where you can also do this same thing in Microsoft Teams, which is really good because there's no menu option you can really do to pull this one off as easy as you could in Word. So what you can do is use the Control-K keyboard shortcut to be able to make links that are two words and phrases instead of just pasting a big old URL in there, which sometimes can be rather lengthy. So in this example that I have, I'm in a Teams chat, and I want to turn Microsoft Bing into a clickable link instead of putting the whole URL for uh, Microsoft Bing out there. Granted, that's a short URL. But sometimes if you're like linking to a particular document, say in a SharePoint library, that thing can go on and on and on and on and on, which kind of throws off the look and feel of your particular <clears throat> message. So in this case, what I do is I go ahead and highlight the word that I want in this case, or phrase. Uh, in this case, it's Microsoft Bing. And then I press Control K on my keyboard. And what that does is it pops up an insert link, much like it does in Word also, but in this case, you're in Teams. And it shows you what the text is that you've highlighted and gives you a place to go ahead and copy in the link that you want that to happen or go to once you click on it. So as you see in my second Im image there, I've got the link to Bing. And when I click on insert, what it has done is it's turned that phrase into a link within my chat. It's still gone ahead and done the preview and I could click on the little X if I wanted to and get rid of that preview. However, I now have a message that's formatted a lot more nicely. And again, if I'm dealing with a URL that goes on for like four lines, 
being able to do this and just maybe put a, uh, the title of the document and turn that into a link is going to be much easier to deal with in your chat. So again, think of the people who are trying to read through tons and tons of chats all day. And if you have the opportunity to put a title of a document that you want to link to, give this a try so they see the link that they can click on instead of having to look at a bunch of URL there that may be confusing or may take up more space than it really needs to. Two and that's it. Yeah, two things on this. One, uh, so I was uh, frustrated that I couldn't, in the Teams experience, you know, select a word or phrase and right click and see like and add a link. Um, that wasn't possible. Um, so that, uh, you know, I, I saw this, I was aware of this, this feature, you know, looking at the link, uh, the, the keyboard shortcuts. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the other, the other, um, yeah, so the, the other thing though is Tom, I saw you tweet about this and I thought about, I said, you know, he's probably gonna add that into his, his <laughs> I, said, I almost did that. <laughs> I had a sixth tip that I could have gone to, yeah. so you could have done it. <laughs> so it's always fun when that that's happened. Uh, all right, so the the final poll is out there. That's and true. I, you yeah. you are the owner. <laughs> all right, and uh, I'm going to wrap up the poll. And Tom, congrats, sixty eight percent. Thank you. And so just to wrap up here, um, so I guess overall for the event, so three of the five I've taken this event, so. Uh, we're back to a tie for that stat. It's amazing that we are so close. Yeah, that's right. We are, we are close, Tom. That's, I tell everyone we're close. Um, yeah, and then you say that I'm out of my mind and you shut down my arguments in the email. <laughs> yeah, well, it just I do what needs to be done, you know, so. Okay, so is May mediation interesting? Yeah, so it might be the kinder, gentler uh, a competition because it's the mediation, but, but then some mediations fail. So, yeah. Yes. Some yeah. mediations do fail. <laughs> you could go. And if you'd like to join us next month, uh, uh, you know, on the 26th, there's a lot happening that week. We've got, uh, so that's Tuesday, the 26th on the 27th and 28th. There is the, uh, the virtual, uh, and community led replacement for the SharePoint conference, which was supposed to happen in Las Vegas, but it's happening, uh, online over those uh, the Wednesday and Thursday of that week. Uh, and then on the Friday, there's going to be another tweet jam, which will be a wrap up of takeaways from the virtual SharePoint conference. So a lot happening that week. Yeah, I, I must admit, even though, you know, I like the live event, I love the SharePoint conference. If given my druthers, that would be the one that I would make every year. Yep. Um, I do love the fact that the whole fear of missing out because I wasn't going to be able to go this year doesn't exist now. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, I, I have mixed feelings about that and some other events as well. But uh, yeah, but we're, we're just over time. But thank you, everyone, for participating. Thank you again, Tom. And uh, yes, the recording will be on YouTube. I'll have the blog post up, which will have our combined slides uh, the the uh, the video as well as if you've not checked out on BuckleyPlanet.com uh, up on the top the productivity tips you can find all of our recordings and every one of those blog posts has a quick jump a quick link to each of the tips so you don't need to wade through a 60 minute webinar recording if you're looking for something in the middle you can click on the specific tip that interests you and jump right to that in the video or you can download the slides. We make all, all of our stuff uh, readily available. We do. Yes, we do. All right. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, for joining. And until next time, thanks a lot, Tom. <laughs> Bye, Christian. Bye, everyone.